Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Man the Maker and welcome back to Crusader Kings 2, the role playing. Um, unfortunately I've got some bad news about this episode. I had a uh, big problem with the audio when I was recording, just the way in which I mixed together the mic and in-game uh, audio has been giving me problems in the past which I've managed to circumvent, but this time it reared its head uh, quite strongly and I the audio is essentially unusable. It's got lots of crackling. It's it just sounds terrible. Just terrible. So I couldn't use it and I thought instead of scrapping the episode and just going to the next one, uh, in particular because this is a pivotal moment, it's a, an exciting episode, um, I thought I would just try my hand at recording over it, trying my best to follow along at what's going on here. Um, I apologize for this. It, it's not going to be as uh, I'm sure, you know, I'm not going to know exactly what I'm thinking at all times as I do things, but uh, hopefully um, things uh, work out well. I will still try and continue to read things, though it's not going to be as smooth as I would like, and I apologize for that. But I thought I got to get this. I got to get this episode to you guys. So here I am. Um, I will go ahead and unpause. I'm recording the recording of my game just without the audio. So here we go. And uh, yeah, of course, we are playing as Du Bohemond, the wise of Sicily. And uh, I've, you know, I've been, I've been frustrated by just, um, you know, it, it really prevents one of the, the key ways of expanding within the game, within the empire. And uh you know, without being able to fabricate claims, it's been very difficult. And now we've gone ahead and had uh, our liege, or the emperor himself, prevent um, internal wars. So we will not even be fabricating any claims going forward. Um, you know, I thought maybe we weren't in the du jour Byzantine Empire. I, I, I did a lot of research on how to avoid... Um, that if there was any way out of that and it seems like only external wars uh, were possible there was really no way for me to do anything within the borders um, even if I have a claim on something and so I looked and what do you see there we have a weak claim on France and Jerusalem um, I did not remember <laughs> exactly how I got that at that time. I was I was rather surprised, but I found it when I was poking around. And I noticed the reason we can press this weak claim is because there's actually a revolt going on in France. Um, King Maurice is weak right now. We saw that 3.6k troops against a rather large French revolt, and so he would probably be losing that. And we have more than that. We've got more by, uh, we've got double his troops. And so I thought to myself, it's like, how did I get this claim? So there you can see it, you know, we can only do it if, um, yeah, I, I thought it had said that we can only do it if it's a claim is being pressed, but I wasn't sure, but we can do it now nonetheless. Mm -hmm. And so I went digging around and what do you know, my, uh, I believe my grandparents, um, my grandmother, yeah, my, my grandfather or my grandmother at some point was the uh, the king of France. And so we planned for this. I, I must have uh, intentionally done this, married into a princess. And so we got the weak claim passed down to us. Now, I debated, you know, is this just, is this a just thing to do? And on one hand, we actually do have a claim on France. You know, it's it's not illegitimate. We didn't forge it. It is within the laws of feudalism that, you know, we have the claim. And who's to say who is the rightful king? Uh, this guy is obviously, his kingdom is falling apart. And maybe he's just, he doesn't deserve it. Um, and, you know, okay, that's a bit of a stretch. I understand that. It's it's a bit of a, a bit of a stretch. But I thought to myself, for the sake of the game, you know, after being so stimmied by... Uh, by the Byzantine law change and just in the past, um, you know, I want to keep things exciting. I want to keep things moving forward. And uh, I think just having a larger realm means more things will happen, more events will pop up, more opportunities to interact with the game because we will just have more vassals, more people within our court, as well as just, you know, the joy of having a larger kingdom. So there you go. I took the step 
I called in Duke Landolf the Fat, who, if you remember, we uh, he befriended us after um, he befriended us after uh, I'm checking out this giant army, by the way, that is crushing the Byzantines. Um, but I'm already involved in something, so I'm not going to worry about that. Probably couldn't even help. But um, yeah, I uh, hmm, I forgot what I was saying. That's uh, that's too bad. So let's see. Anyways, I, I totally blanked on what I was going on about. But uh, oh yeah, so I I justified it just for the sake of the game. I'm just gonna do it. We're gonna keep things moving forward. We're gonna try at least to uh, have something new occur because you know if we just stay on our little island we're just gonna have these small events coming up it's very stable um, the famous writer proposed family chronicles of course we will uh, give them patronage and Duke Landoff the fat at one point invited us randomly to a feast in our honor that's what I was talking about and uh, there he I have no idea why he invited us of all people, but I went and we became good friends and I ended up joining in a war of his and helping him hold on to his uh, his title. I think he's a duke. And I was like, hey, why not invite him back into the war? So muster my troops up and uh, we're going to go to war with France. Um, <laughs> sounds terrifying. I know it's uh, it's that's like a rather large enemy to take on, but uh, we checked it out. We think we can take it on. Here, I accidentally uh, converted. Um, I have my my pope man, my my priest. Uh, I forget his name. My humble patriarch, the title ecclesiarch. I had my ecclesiarch uh, trying to convert people, but I guess because he's Catholic, he actually converted uh, people to Catholicism. So uh, not great, because I believe in the last episode we were converted to um, Orthodox. So I realized my mistake, I changed that, um, and I, I plan on in the future seeing which one of my vassals are going to go and uh, demand, I'm gonna demand religious conversion from them and uh, see see if they join us. So here we are, we're gonna march off to war. We're gonna land our troops and uh, begin our first siege of our first, or maybe not first, but for a long time, we have not had like a really large war, you know, so. Uh, in order to best wage that war, I, of course, am going to go out and search for uh, a siege leader. You know, I, you know I love them, and they really are so good. They really are so good. Uh, I feel like I'm talking a lot because I don't have to uh, click around and play on the game. Um, yeah, so we are just going to do our sieging gonna find out where his uh, his holdings are his actual personal holdings which is only the county of Paris my man's got two kingdoms a duchy and just one county so that probably contributes to the revolt because he's you know pretty weak uh, you know against revolt of course he's got both kingdoms so against outsiders he can raise massive troops but uh, not uh, not so much against a revolt. And as you notice there, that 7K stack up in uh, northern France is my ally, the Duke. Uh, when I invited him, ah, an event, I've been making an effort to spend more time with my sister, Matilda. Yep, we are good friends with her. Um, we are still family focused, so that event has been popping up quite a bit. And uh, meanwhile, another revolt has happened in the Byzantine Empire. Uh, not something that we are going to concern ourselves with, however. Uh, so we're just not going to pay any attention to that. Or it's, I believe, actually, sorry, that was a, a pope. The pope man is declaring war on the Byzantines. So we've got someone converting to the Orthodox faith. And 
yeah, now we're just going to siege things down. And I was really so pleased. My liege has a heretic as one of her advisors. We can send a complaint to her, it is not my concern. Uh, I think I don't have anything that really makes me care that much and I'm kind, I'm just not gonna mess around, you know? That would be kind of a mean thing to do, to, uh, to be outraged and complain to my liege and you know, complain about this poor, uh, poor guy. Um, this guy right here, I believe, who is Maya Fizite, or this one. Yep, he's a, uh, a heresy of the Orthodox. So again, I'm not, not gonna care about it. We're just gonna continue to siege down. And uh, I, I kind of felt like I had a race, right? Um, with the rebellion. Because if they win, or lose, uh, then the realm is whole again. It's not a, a revolt to overthrow or to for independence. And if that happens, suddenly uh, the enemy is going to have quite a bit more troops against me. And we don't have a larger army than the revolt and him combined. So I was pretty scared of that. Looks like my steward died, um, as well as my sister Matilda died of gout. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to try and see if we can find somebody who can uh, replace and um, yep, just gonna do the usual thing it's just it's so easy you know so easy to do that of course I uh, how many times have I done that in this series I select intrigue in, uh, there now I know you know our guy wouldn't really be interested in teaching people on intrigue but again for kind of the sake of moving things forward and having some variety in the game um, that guy came and he decided to arrive great for the the sake of variety in the game I thought to myself like if if I'd have somebody who's just all the time and I never teach my children anything but being just then I'm never going to be able to play as anyone who is intrigue focused and so I kind of decided I guess you know, maybe uh, it's against the spirit a little bit um, to do things like that. But again, just for the sake of not even like my benefit, but to allow some variety within the game. And here we go. We, we, we spot out one of the uh, one of the king's armies that just got crushed. And we're going to go and take care of that. Meanwhile, uh, Duke Landolf the Fat is up there just sieging away. So that's always really nice. You know, taking care of these small armies is uh, is important. When you can find someone that you can crush, you should always do it because you never know when they're going to come up with some more troops. They can hire mercenaries. The revolt can end, and suddenly they've got you know another six or seven or eight thousand troops. Yeah, right here, I'm just deciding on who I should, where I should put my uh, cavalry leader, and really thought to myself, is it worth it? And I also noticed at some point. That my retinue had died uh, no idea when that happened and so I just go ahead and purchase it again because I've got the cash we're gonna put uh, some soldiers in probably not something that I need to worry about too much yeah just confirming that it did in fact spawn because I swore I had gotten it before and I just did not uh, remember losing them so like I said we're just gonna keep taking down these small armies making sure uh, you get good war score from it you get pretty good war score and uh you know it also helps just make the rest of the war that much easier as long as you keep them small and keep breaking down i do the more i study the cathar religion the more i feel compelled to embrace it so we have a heretic our ecclesiarch these ecclesiarchs are uh going crazy but i thought he's catholic might as well arrest him. And uh, at this point, I also remembered at some point, um, you know, we've got a new heir, Stratigos Amphoi has become it. Um, yeah, I think, uh, right, so the Ecclesiarch there, he's, uh, he's not of our religion. So I, of course, uh, just arrested him. I, I thought that was prudent. 
now we have an orthodox in place so we can actually convert and uh, at that moment i also remembered that i had uh, sentenced someone for stealing for uh, a noble for two years in prison and at the time i was like i bet you i'll forget about it and i did i never released him from prison and uh, he's not there anymore so safe bet is uh, safe bets that he died in prison and i just completely just let him rot away so be careful when you go into a prison with a uh somewhat distracted ruler they may completely forget about you so yep yeah, we are still in war i'm gonna check on how the other guy is doing that's our war so they have two percent us the war score of 49 percent now to our 58 so we just gained the lead like i said i would really like to take this down first before the war ends um, if the war if we win, one of our commanders has improved. That's always nice. If we win uh, and the revolt is still going, I believe we will have to fight that revolt. Uh, you can see their stack right there is six and a half thousand. Not insignificant. Um, we also figured out we could invest in technology, and I kind of thought all of my uh, I got a lot of technology spreading on its own. You see the gears there, um, a lot of them are turning. If you raise it, then those will not be turning anymore, uh, unless there's like really high technology near you. We're already pretty high. So I said, you know what, I'm just gonna bank the points. I'm in no real rush for that. Um, I could improve my military marginally, but again, I'm not super worried about it at the moment. Um, again, I'm trying to hunt down another commander and uh, would love, love for that siege leader, but he's just, they're just not showing up. They're just not willing to join us. Yep, of course they, they always, they always come. So I know that stack of a thousand is from a different smaller rebellion again, which I'm not gonna worry about. point I don't really remember why I was checking out the lines of succession or what I was looking for here which is too bad but we've got our commanders all decked out now so that's fine we're going to continue just uh, letting our allies siege things up spending way too much time micromanaging who my commanders should be and where considering I'm fighting you know the largest I fought so far was I think a thousand or fifteen hundred and uh, I'm, you know, I'm not going to fight that six and a half thousand stack unless I have to. Which, uh, again, we are at seventy-two percent in this war, and at some point around here, I'm, I've become supremely confident that uh, that we are going to win this war. Du Bohemond is going to become the king of France. Um, adding it to the Byzantine Empire so we're not, you know we're not gonna be independent and uh, we're not gonna get all of the land that is actually French just I believe the du jour kingdom of France just that one title this war isn't going quite as well as I thought it would I lose more men per battle than I'd planned in the sieges the sieges are going on forever more manpower and more weapons are what I need perhaps a friend can assist me we could ask him to join ask him for money or ask for nothing and, uh, I believe this is my kinsman, Du, uh, yeah, Du Robert, one of my neighbors and my friend. So yeah, let's ask him. Maybe he'll join. Probably didn't need it, but uh, I thought, you know, always no harm, no harm in asking. So now we're sieging down the capital. And uh, do you, Du Robert, my duties to my family and my vassals disallow me to help you at this time. So he said no. Slightly unfortunate, but, uh, and we have a cough. And at this moment, I pretty much crack myself. And maybe developing smallpox. If we die, this war ends, and I'm not even positive that the, uh, the claim will be passed on. It should be, because we did press it in war, which is what you need to do to uh, let them move on. 
Um, looks like our doctor here is uh, studying the stars and ha made us fast for uh, the better half of a fortnight. Gave us a mild success treatment there, which is just a, a tiny amount. And we have also a fever now. Not good. If we die, this war is over, essentially. Um, I'm pleased to report that your errant subject, Bishop Rollins, so we successfully converted somebody to the Orthodox. We're, we're going to spread it. Since we decided it was the right thing to do to become Orthodox, our steward once again dies. I feel like we've had a string of uh, dead stewards. They're, they're not really making it that long. So we will seek treatment for our illness here. And then uh, search for a better steward. The first guy is good, but he's deceitful. And I'd rather not have somebody deceitful, not in such a trying time. Gilbert is fairly sure you're developing consumption. He insists that you follow his instructions very well. We don't know that it's consumption, though. It's not confirmed. He just thinks it is. Could be wrong. He's not the greatest doctor, I believe. Gilbert told you to lean over a pot of boiling water and breathe in the steam against your cough. And that gave us uh, 0.25 health. Not very much. So this guy joined. We will assign him to be our steward. And uh, continue on the war. Continue just sieging down these holdings. You know, at this point, it realized it's the war is won. I, I don't think there's anything they can do to stop us. We've got this uh, 11,500 K stack. Whatever the hell, more than half thousand stack here. And uh, yeah, we are going to really do Bohemian making a play. Now, I, I also, you know, I thought to myself, he's not ambitious. And this is an ambitious move to take. But again, I really just felt for the purpose of keeping the game moving along, uh, adding some potential instability to the realm, adding some more danger, uh, as well as more power. You know, that's that's definitely part of it. In order to bring balance to your humors, Gilbert made you drink salty water to induce vomiting. And it was very effective. I'm glad I hired Gilbert. Well, salty water will also uh, give you diarrhea. So we're just we're purging. We're, we're just purging out right now. But uh, it was only a small effect. You are thrown between waves of chills and sweats. Food has lost its appeal and no amount of sleep seemed to ready your fatigue. You've contracted consumption. Oh man, I was I was really it's a shame you can't hear me at this point because I was so stressed. Here we become infirm. We're in bed. Our court physician has come to see us and offers treatment for our illness. He's not great, so I'm gonna go with the middle option. Gilbert brought you a concoction made from buckthorn and senna. At first you thought the potion ineffectual, but later the same day you felt a churning in your bowels, which sent you running for the privy. As you howled in anguish, Gilbert assured you that the foulness was expelled with your feces. I actually feel better. Yeah, I. <laughs> at this point, when every event for this would come up, I would just go in and look at the effect immediately. So we had a successful treatment, which is fantastic. That helps us so much. Another victory of a battle somewhere, and I'm like, wait, what? Won the siege of uh, there, but apparently he decided to land a couple troops uh, on my capital where my retinue was slowly building up. Easily could have been wiped, but because they're, it's basically all heavy cavalry, uh, it seems to have managed quite well. While I'm here, I say, hey, build a keep. <laughs> um, our liege is uh, offering for us to become steward. I say no, because I don't like her. And uh, there you can see, we are continuing to siege out Paris. We're at 93%. And uh, I believe, no, that rhymes is, uh, rhymes is not our sieged holding. So I don't have to worry about that. I'm just going to put in any commander there and just let it continue on. At this point, we're still sick, you know, and we're a regent. So... Uh, Things could happen to end this war inconclusively, and we were so close, so close um, 
I, I just remember sitting there, <laughs> my heart was beating and uh, just praying, praying to the Orthodox gods that uh, I could get this 2% more. I just needed 2% more. Um, some of my, my people have formed an alliance. They're husband and wife, I believe. So it's, yeah, my son and his wife, two counts uh, within my domain. I can worry about it. They have a large, uh, large garrison, but we are moving quicker than them. And I think I did some quick rough math and the chances that we would beat them, as you can see, once again, they tried to land troops. And once again, my retinue beat them back. Um, don't mess with heavy cav, man. Heavy, heavy cav is quite strong. So yeah, they're sieging down that holy on the bottom and we're racing them. If they get it first, then we're going to have to do more sieges um, and take even longer, risking dying or God knows what else happening um, while we are in bed and infirm. And uh, so, but we managed to beat them to it. We get the siege, we pause it, and we enforce our demands. Duke Despot Bohemian has inherited the claim to the Kingdom of France. We have won. And just like that, we added France, or part of it. <laughs> the actual Kingdom of France is only that kind of northern section um, where the French Revolt is and that purple. And I think it might be a little bit more. And I'm not entirely sure why we didn't get more of it. But uh, so he held on to his kingdom. He's still a king. He's the king of Jerusalem, our neighbor. And uh, his heir will be looking at us to come back. But um, nonetheless, we have shed the title of Dew at least as our primary title, and become King Bohemian of France. However, we are still embroiled in a civil war. As you can see, we are 63% losing. Uh, yeah, at this point, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how exactly we uh, didn't get as much as I thought we were going to get. And uh, now we've got a new heir, Prince Roger. Um, and unfortunately, I realized because we are an elective, um, I'm being outvoted. No, not right now. I, I think I still need to vote for somebody. And uh, I was thinking about Count Roger, but he's just so bad. He's just so bad. He's just not good, you know. Bad stats. He's just, again, he's got, a, I think, a hair lip or something. So I'm going to go back to probably maybe uh, Antfoy or Walter. I'm wondering why he hates me so much. He's ambitious, so that'll do it. So I'm going to take a look. I think I'm going to go with Antfoy. He's kind of got the best overall stats. I vote for him. He becomes the heir. And uh, then I realize, yep, there he is. Then I realize, oh, <laughs> I realize that I... Uh, I am being outvoted for something. People are voting. Oh, well, I can usurp the Duchy of Valois, which uh, I'm not going to do at this moment. I have no real need to. And I am still involved in a war. I realize that my ally left the war. Um, so I'm going to invite him back in. I realize I have an empty. Uh, slot as an advisor, which I don't remember uh, ever seeing before. That's that's new since the last time that uh, I played, which has been a while. Um, at least to be a be a king or maybe something to do with our regency. I wasn't really sure um, what to do with it and uh, really what what role that one played. Um, so. Decided not to do it. My selection is not being uh, asked for. I did see that it mentioned something about voting, and I was like, maybe they can vote for a uh, vote for an heir. And now these two people are voting for. Um, I think it's my 
son right now. I think that's Duke Roger, but it's it switches or it switched around a few times in short succession, and uh, so right now they're not voting for who I want, and I think they're voting for the Duke of Berry, which uh, would mean that I would no longer be the king of France if uh, I died. And don't forget, I'm still sick and there's still a chance that I could die. I do have some more troops available to me, which is nice because I've got a much smaller army. Um, actually only marginally larger than the rebel. So I raise up another, you know, 700 or so, eight, 800 almost. I look around making sure there's nothing that I lost. Um, the, em the Empire, I don't know if you saw that back there, but the Empire did lose its holy war, uh, losing Tripoli. We have gained quite a bit of threat from taking the Kingdom of France. We're up to 49%, um, but uh, not too worried about that. Um, only, I mean, we can face a defensive pact, and uh, that's fine. You know, I don't really actually plan on going to war that that soon. Um, I figure that I'll just uh, rest on my laurels and kind of get my stuff together. I also realized that because we are king, we are no longer underneath the king of Sicily, and our liege is uh, our liege is the Basilius himself, which gives us quite a bit more power. Um, we're going we're now on the Basilius's council, so we will have more say in things, and maybe we can force a vote to allow internal wars. I'm not entirely sure if that's feasible. Uh, there's the duchy that we can usurp again containing paris and at some point I'll probably make a i will definitely do that and once i take paris back i will make that one of the uh two or three duchies that i'm going to keep um, i forget exactly how much that is um and uh this might be the end of the episode i'm going to take a look real quick it is and so we decided, uh, I, I decided that I was going to end it here. And um, we will see what happens next time. Will I be able to put down this revolt? Uh, will I be able to keep the crown? Or will I be voted out? Will my heir, uh, rather, not be voted in? I mean, they don't like me. I'm not French, though I am Norman, so it's not that far off. Um, but I'm also Orthodox. I am a conqueror. Uh, so there, you know, it's going to be a struggle. We're going to have to do some governing uh, and get a lot of things in order. We got a lot of pop-ups going on up top. A lot of things we got to pay attention to and figure out. Still have to put down this revolt, uh, which I believe was for Gavelkind, which at this moment is something to consider because I at least wouldn't lose. Um, I wouldn't lose the kingdom, but uh, I don't really want to lose any of my other titles either. So. We're gonna, of course, try and put down that revolt. And uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. It was a challenge for me. <laughs> um, the audio should be good though. Uh, this will also probably be of a better volume just because I'm able to hold the mic in front of me. And uh, the episodes uh, to come, the next one, the audio is back to normal. I've already checked, everything is fine with it. So again, I apologize for this. Um, you know, it's, it's rather hard to keep up with exactly what's going on, so I hope it wasn't too disruptive. Um, you got to hear my voice a lot more than you normally do, so take that as you will. And, uh, yeah, you know, please uh, let me know how I did, I guess. Um, just doing this kind of style of commentating um, might be something I'm, I'll look into for other games in the future, or if this hopefully doesn't, but if this happens again... Um, I'd rather do this than just have an episode disappear. So I will uh, say goodbye. My name is Man the Maker. I hope you guys did enjoy this and uh, have a wonderful day, ladies and gentlemen. Take care.